What is going on you guys? My name is Daniel and on this channel we go over everything mirrorless Canon cameras. Now that I'm done with speaking really fast, let's get into it. So the EOS R takes RF glass and it is super, super expensive. So we're going to go over lenses today that you can get for 100 and less cheddar. Wow, I said that really weird. Yes, I'm in Finland and they use euros. So get over it. I don't have any dollars to flash at you. Ready? We're going to go over them right now. So today I picked up some of the cheapest lens I can in Helsinki. I have three of them and today we're going to be seeing if the ESOR can make up with poor and cheap lenses. And so we're going to take some portraits here with Julia, our Hi. wonderful model, and see what we come up with. So some of the lenses that I'm going to be going over, we're going to go into Lightroom and show you the photos and some of the things that I didn't like about how they performed, but how I managed to overcome that with the effects that you have in Lightroom. So right up off the bat, I picked up the 50 millimeter right here for 40 euros off somebody's second hand and it even came with a little extender and a uh, plume out the front. And this has been a really good, I mean, everybody knows what the Nifty 50 is. No more introduction for that lens. Next up, I purchased a busted, the front of it is busted right here, and I picked up this for 35 euros off somebody. And this is the Canon, Canon zoom lens EF 75 to 300 millimeter, 1.4 to 5.6 third generation, I guess. Anyways, this thing has a bunch of play and is super difficult to shoot with because of how unstable the lens is because there's no in uh, there's no stabilization inside it but it does its job for what it needs to do and it takes pictures that are zoomed and finally i have a pancake crop sensor 24 millimeter uh this is a leftover from some older stuff so we're gonna go in and i picked this one up for i believe 70 and i'm actually going to be trading this this upcoming week for a this is a, this is for a crop sensor, and I'm going to be trading this Pancake 24 for a Pancake 40, yeah, 40 millimeter that is for a full frame camera. And so, but for now, while I have this one still from an older collection, we're going to go over exactly how it works on the ESOR. And one of my favorite photos from the day was actually taken on this lens. Okay, so we're at the beginning. I've already edited and processed these out, so we're going to flip the images all the way back to original photos. So we're gonna do reset to original on this one. And this one was shot with the 22.8 millimeter. I really did enjoy these shots, but I enjoyed the composition on this one a lot better. This was the final result that I got out of that. There we go, reset to original. And so it was a little bit dark, but I tend to shoot a little bit, in, like a little bit differently so that I can bring back some of the shadows and the highlights and everything like that. So when you press auto, it automatically boosts the highlights and drops the shadows and gave you pretty much a perfect image right off the bat. Some things to notice is right over here, there's a ton of grit, not a, not a ton actually, there's a lot worse with the 50 millimeter, but you can see some right there. And what I did to, I'll show you. So all I did to get rid of that was go in and drop the green and it pretty much eliminates all of that. And there's not really anything else that's green in this photo, so that wasn't a problem, but there was a little bit of that. And everything else was very sharp. I actually enjoyed this composition over what the 50 gave me in for the exact same position because it really gave you those leading lines and then I just upped the cont clarity a little bit and then that pulled her away from the background even more. My wonderful model here, Julia. All right, right here is the exact same one. With the 50, this is the final product. I, it's a little bit harder for your eyes to follow those leading lines, but it really did a good job of blowing away everything in the background. You can't even tell those are cars, but you can tell there's a light coming out of it. And But like I said, right here, there is so much green coming off these corners on this with the sun going down but everything is blown out wonderfully. Julia's eyes are really in focus there. And it just turned out, I think those were a really good one. However, I did like the pancake a little bit better even. And the problem with the 
pancake lens is that it's cropped in and only using a part of the sensor while it's doing this. This one's a zoom lens. So right here is the zoom lens. Oh, actually, I don't think I've messed with this one at all and I really do enjoy this. So come in here, as you notice, there's not a whole lot, probably boost up the exposure. And as far as everything, like I said, there's a little bit of green along those, how they look green. Those are perfectly white in the background, but they, they're just so blurred. And then that vignetting makes it kind of green. So you're not getting the perfect colors out of the background that you would from a higher end lens. But Julia here looks very, very good. Her background's blown out. Yeah, it just gives you that zoomed effect that you're going for. So as far as that, success. All right, moving to the next location which I enjoy for blowing out the background on these little branches. Let's see here, this is the zoom one again. So yeah, this is zoomed in. I was standing quite a bit far back and as you can tell, there's a lot of light coming over there. You can still see the green behind all these branches again, the vignetting, and then the lens flare. So it gives it a very older style look to it, but I, I think it, it works for this photo. Um, but if you're, it's going to just give you those flares and stuff because it's not that great of a glass. The 50, yep, here's the 50 millimeter right there doing the exact same thing. Nice blown out, blown out, blown out, blown out. And there's almost none of that vignetting coming from this direction. Uh, there's a little bit on these buildings, but that's really small. And then there's none on the branches, really. Yep, and then I did not enjoy any of the photos that I took out of... This one for the 24 to 10, or that not the the 24 millimeter pancake lens. It did all right here, but I just didn't think it had as much to give compositionally as the other two lenses did. But I, I still gave it a shot, and it's all right. It's all right. It looks like something that came out of an iPhone. Is the real problem with this shot? This just looks like something out of an iPhone, which I, I didn't like. So. We're gonna go a no-go for that one, so it's not doing so hot that way, but it did get one of my favorite shots for the day. Here is what I got with the 24, or yep, the 24 millimeter, and I kind of enjoyed this one, but once again, like I said, it kind of looks like it's just shot with an iPhone, a really, really good iPhone, but an iPhone. And this one will go back to the auto, very, very golden because the sun's coming through and hitting her face really, really harsh. And you can tell over the course of these ones, there's the harsh shadows and then you can see the sun coming. And this might have been three, four minutes and the sun was gone. Right there, same gig. And I guess that one's all right. I think this one's shot with the 50. Yeah, this one's the 50. As you can tell, everything's blown out. But on the trees, you can see that the green's really coming through right there. Looks fan freaking tastic everything's blurry, Julia pops out, it's got that composition, and the colors are very nice on our subject. Not so great in the background, but our subject is still good. And then my, my second favorite shot for the night was shot here with the zoom lens at 300, so all the way out. But the biggest problem with these is these trees behind it. I'm going to set to original and you are going to see. There is so much green. Really, that was set to original? Reset to original. Oh, that is the original. Okay, so there wasn't too much. I didn't edit that a whole lot. But this green around the trees is very obvious. And Julia looks good. The scene looks good. The trees don't look good. But all I did to remove those, since nothing else was really green, everything's very dead, it's the winter, is just drop that down. And that totally goes away, editing that. However, if I was shooting in a green environment and that happened, it would not be that easy. Once again, one of my favorite shots for the night, and you do that and she just pops right there, maybe a little bit less darkening, there we go, and maybe a small amount of clarity to just pull her even further away from everything else, and that really brings Julia out there. So, all in all, I spent less than a hunt, so in total I spent about 130 on all of these lenses and I think that's a fantastic deal for what I'm able to do and I have the ability to move away from my thousand dollar lens and move into more specialty shots is what I'm going to call them with incredible amount of background blur 
the ability to make objects behind your subject look so much larger and zoomed in, and they're still blown out, but just with a lot more effort. And then this one is light, portable, and still is has the ability to give you a nice image, nice sharp image. And I really enjoyed shooting with all of these. It's nice to come off because the RF glass is also incredibly heavy, making this lens, this camera, as you have the RF glass on it, very front heavy and not very fun to shoot with that way. However, when you throw the Nifty 50 on there, it is significantly lighter, putting the stabilization back into the rear. Well, I guess it's the center of gravity further back in the camera, making it more steady. Same with, especially with the pancake lens, not so much with this lens, but this is about half the weight of the 24 to 105. So if you enjoy this type of video and want to see more of it in the future, don't forget to let me know down in the comments section, subscribe and like so that I know that this is something that you guys want to see in the future because all of us would love to have more lenses and more gear. Who doesn't? And my name is Daniel. Thank you so much for watching.